The following video is dedicated to your favorite system lately, London System for White. But more importantly, it's dedicated to a great friend of mine, 11 times Serbian champion in billiards and 2100 FIDE player Andrea Klasovic. For the past, I'd say, 12 to 15 months, he kept sending me his blitz games that he played online on chess.com and Lee Chess. And, you know, uh, out of all those interesting games, I would like to point out and emphasize the importance of one system that really caught my, uh, my eye and I would have to say and caught my attention, basically. I just have to say uh, that I named it after him, just like you see. It's a London system. It's not unknown. It was played by Ginger GM Simon Williams. But what my friend Klaske did uh, was something absolutely new. And I was trying to find in all these databases, has anyone ever played like that with white pieces? And I couldn't find except like two games in Italy by way weaker or lower rated players than himself. Even I have to admit you and to reveal a secret, that I became a victim of this system. Actually, uh, that famous critical day, uh, I was a victim twice. Uh, first, uh, soccer star Jovelic and I, we were playing pairings tennis against uh, in do doubles, and we played against uh, international master Marcetic and Klasovic. So we first lost in tennis. Then I said, okay, guys, you defeated us somehow in tennis after a very tough match, I gotta admit. Uh, but it was a very sweet uh, win for them. So I say, okay, let's go and let's now switch to chess. Implying that we we're gonna crush them. But the problem was that I even got crushed in chess in this following system. You're gonna like this one so much. It's so easy for playing. And we're gonna be checking four of his games. And I just have to tell you, I gave this system a name Klaske attack in the London system. So let's get started. Hopefully you're going to enjoy it and give me your feedback about the quality of these lines. It begins with d4, knight f6, knight f3, g6, bishop f4. It's a London system and it's a normal thing. Uh, we're now just checking against g6, against d5 and against d6. You know what should be the plan for white. After bishop g7, ginger gm Simon Williams and my friend Klaske, they go for h4. I like it a lot. Uh, they're just willing to kind of prepare themselves for the attack and push that pawn up to h5 in a crucial moment. So here, uh, most of his opponents and the games that he sent me uh, went with h5. Uh, it's a very logical thing. They just want to stop the attack and somehow without committing themselves with ca short castle first they just play uh, and take precaution measures with h5 and they don't want to give white to go with h5 uh, even to go with a potential attack along the h file uh, apart from that they can go with d6 which is like a flexible way of playing but here you have two ways of playing you can play a really primitive and play h5 and second exchange immediately and then carry on with your initiative playing on a compensation or you can just play in my opinion probably also kind of solid system with the knight c3 if you want to go with e4 22 long castles and then uh, to somehow flirt with the ideas such as h5 finally you can also play what he used to do e3 followed by c3 Queen c2, knight bd2, and believe it or not, bishop on d3. Uh, about this bishop on d3, I'll talk a little bit later. And I say, believe it or not, I, I'm not saying it just like that. I gotta explain you the things behind bishop d3. So, most of these guys who go with the straightaway castles, of course, you shouldn't waste your time. I mean, second exchange with h5. Uh, of course, if they don't take, then you have a choice of taking here and going with the queen d2 followed by bishop h6 or even uh you know like pushing your pawn up to h6 but of course with a rook on h1 
queen on d2 possibility and bishop h6 of course that you're gonna take on g6 and uh, follow your attack with uh, queen d2 bishop h6 uh, also possibly you want to go knight c3 for long castles if they take second exchange and go with a3 so we're about to check the first game that he played there uh, the guy just goes with a flexible d6 he just wants to go with the bishop here or wants to place the bishop on g4 and here we go with a very interesting system queen to d3 uh, queen on d3 uh, threatens knight g5 if you play f6 you would just lock the activity of your bishop you have these double pawns yes you do stop knight g5 but somehow you also create weaknesses on the light squares i'm not saying it's bad for black but I'm also not saying it's a, it should be a bad position for us. If they go with h6, uh, I have a very interesting suggestion here because you want to remove your bishop from some e5 ideas. You want to play knight c3, bishop e2, once they play bishop g4 most likely, go with a long castle and transpose that bishop and transfer it onto the king's side, basically h4 square, where it's going to fight against e5 ideas and the white definitely has a practical compensation although when you play h4 most of these guys will just go with h5 and the whole system and the whole Klaski attack could work after h5 why because all of a sudden g6 pawn becomes weak and to be honest with you uh, even when i played this with the black pieces i played h5 and i didn't realize that the g6 could be really that weak I also checked this on some computers with some engines and the following system could work very nicely in practice uh, of course you go with e3 and when you go with e3 uh, now we have a couple of systems hey by the way here after queen to d3 I forgot to show you one line so after castles h5 knight h5 rook h5 g takes e3 d6 and queen to d3 once again it avoids actually it avoids bishop f5 uh, it fights successfully against bishop g4 that is not that efficient and i'm about to show you his game here and also uh, it gives you some uh, knight g5 threats when they go with bishop g4 we're about to check the first game played by himself he played knight g5 threatening mate in one they gotta go with f5 there's nothing else to be done there and then you go queen b3 check threatening on b7 threatening on f7 and d6 and when king h8 you just go with knight e6 threatening the queen and the rook the guy played queen c8 he played f3 and since this guy had uh, bishop hanging rook hanging b7 possibly weak c7 possibly weak and of course above all that bishop on g4 being lost black resigned 12 moves and that's what makes this video very interesting because all these games will be uh, will be played within 15 moves that's one thing that's very much i like it somebody uh, might ask me hey maya what if this well i still can play 96 winning the game but i'll still can play queen b7 in some moments uh after h4 that's why i believe that most of your opponents will go with h5 and if you ask me this could really be critical against this uh, attack so when you go with e3 they now have d6 and they now have c5 if they go for c5 with the idea and intention to attack the center uh, and also to place the queen on b6 since your uh, dark square bishop has left control of the b2 square you react in the most flexible fashion the rule about these positions is whenever they take on d4 you should be recapturing by e pawn getting an open e file and going towards the king's side and preparing yourself for the attack when you play c3 uh, his opponent went for queen b6 threatening on b2 now most of these guys who play these london systems go with some queen b3 go with some solid ideas sometimes they go with knight a3 avoiding queen b2 because of knight b5 or threatening to chase that queen away with the knight c4 but here my friend Klaskia goes with queen c2 what's the point of queen c2 he's defending b2 square and wants to go with a light square bishop on d3 he's about to create a battery and for the first time uh, we're paying attention how weak this pawn on g6 could become 
So after d6, bishop d3, we got a famous battery. And for the first time, I can say that this is uh, one of the most ideal setups against King's Indian approach with this London Klaski attack. So after bishop d3, c takes, e takes, and there we go. Now they just go with bishop g4. Very logical thing. He's, uh, you know, like attacking this knight. He would like to take it. Uh, also, he's developing uh, one, one more piece, delaying development of the knight on b8 because it can be developed on both d7 and c6. And here, a beautiful thing is knight g5. That's what I like about these positions. So you shouldn't sack immediately on g6 because king can run away. But you actually go with knight g5. Now you're obviously threatening to take on g6 and they just go castles. Once again, it's too early to castle because you got to complete development of this knight. After knight d2, he's completing development of his pieces. Black also plays knight c6 and it looks like Black is just one move away from ideal development and breaking in the center, especially considering the fact that the king on e1 looks weak and kind of exposed. You now go with the knight c4, threatening this queen. And after queen c7, he brought the knight back to e3, threatening this bishop. Now e5 doesn't make much sense because if you want to, I don't know, fight for initiative, you got to probably keep the light square bishop. And after bishop d7, Klaski won in a very nice style here. He sacrificed the piece on g6. F takes, queen takes g6. And what do we have here? Uh, his opponent went for bishop e8 and he came up with queen g7. Nice queen sack to win the piece, to win the game. And after knight e6, he's just completely winning. And that's how he won the game. He was up to pawns and his opponent immediately resigned. What I like about this game is simplicity and the way he was conducting his attack. Only logical moves. Uh, I would say pretty primitive. Any c5, c3, any queen b6, you anyways want to place your queen on c2, creating battery with the bishop d3, always recapturing by e pawn uh, towards the center to have an open e file, knight g5, building up an attack with all these pieces, and here, finally, a very important move in order to complete your development and to go with one more piece to add into the action, action and attack, knight. On, from b1 to d2 and c4. So then he played knight c4, and when he did all kinds of preps, he came up with this bishop sack. Very lovely plan, and that's what I like about this system, uh, how simple it is. Of course, that black in this position after queen g6 should have played rook a to e8. But you know what? After long castles, I'm just going to flip up the board and to show you. It looks somehow very ugly for us. I'm not saying black is bad. I'm just saying in blitz, in rapid games, I don't even want to talk about bullet games. This is extremely annoying to face with the black pieces. And just like I said, even I couldn't defend myself properly. After e3, let's go with the most classic King's Indian approach. If they go with d6, bishop d3. And uh, if you remember previously, I brought up a story about the bishop on d3. Usually, I was just trying to find if I can find some games here. I only found one guy played in Italy like uh, 10 years ago with the white pieces or maybe one more guy also. But these guys were some, some uh, 16 and 1700 guys. Uh, the point about this bishop d3 thing is that in London, your bishop always goes on e2. And the special reason for that is once break, uh, once black breaks with e5 in the center, they won't have e4 potential fork. But here, you go with this seemingly bad move, bishop on d3, in order to somehow, uh, you know, like utilize a possibly weak pawn on g6. So after you go with the bishop d3, let me now show you two more games and complete Klaski attack. So after bishop d3, if they play the most logical move, like they don't want to commit themselves with a short castle, they want to complete development, pin the knight and the queen, but it doesn't change your plan. So you go c3, knight bd7, looks like all systems are ready to go with e5 and afterwards e4 
to win the piece and do the fork and da 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 you go queen c2 battery and once again you're targeting that pawn on a g6 and kind of you know like provoking your opponent hey buddy feel free if you're about to make castle then i'm just going to kill you with a very primitive knight g5 f3 where your bishop is just hanging and stands in the middle of nowhere and uh, you know with this battery bishop g6 is on horizon or in the game was c5 this guy didn't feel anything of course he completes his development plays a6 like nothing's happening what the hell is he trying to do and boom knight g5 ideal development of white and here if they go for castles f3 and this is what i spoke about the uh, bad bishop on e6 you're just completely winning uh, they're completely lost and of course uh, it's time to resign or if knight g5 his opponent went with a rook c8 he didn't didn't feel anything what was actually going on in the game klaski went for bishop g6 and the guy instantly resigned because he couldn't take because of queen g6 and checkmate and if he goes with something like short castle i don't want to even discuss about this position because you're already uh, down a pawn i have an attack and uh, i have all reasons to believe that i'm gonna meet you afterwards and finally the fourth game where the guy went knight bd7 uh, where he's gonna have problems to go with e5 and d4 uh, because who is going to support with the bishop and g4 he at least, at least threatens to do it immediately uh, straight knight bd7 you just go with pretty primitive and logical c3 i'm saying primitive because you're not making any special moves and yet your attack works perfectly fine so after c3 c5 queen c2 famous battery c takes e takes uh, taking towards the center and opens the e file and the another guy who didn't fill his threats who didn't understand the point of the whole system klaskia captured on g6 came up with queen g6 and after this threatened mate on f7 when the guy went with the only move he came up with knight e6 and came up with mate on g7 once again i named uh, the following attack uh klaski attack uh, not just because he's a great play in billiards don't forget 11 times serbian champion but because he's very creative he's very innovative here and basically what he came up with in these games i liked so much i simply had to share like this piece of uh, his own like master pieces and stuff at the way uh, he won these games and uh, i really just have to say that's a big accomplishment and congratulations for all these fantastic games thanks for watching the video hope you enjoyed and i would appreciate your feedback about the the video that i just made thanks so much and good luck